Welcome everyone to our two minutes before our start time. We're just waiting for all of you to come in. As for our registrations, we are expecting about 600 of you, so quite a big number. So let's just wait for people to be comfortable uh, to log in and, uh, so that we can start together. So welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. It's going to be an exciting discussion today. Uh, presentations on the prestigious European Research Council grants. And we are with experts here who are making sure that you know enough so that uh, to inspire you to, to apply for these grants and to allay your fears on the, on the application process. So welcome, welcome. So one minute before the time, so just uh, relax. If you're coming in early, we'll just uh, give um, most of you some some time you know to to settle in so we're tr trickling now to a hundred participants so um i'm expecting about half of the registration so i know i know many of you you know you are very um uh, busy with other things so we'll give you a minute to to get comfortable and to make sure that you have maybe a hot of uh, a cup of coffee or tea or water, make sure that, that you have your bathroom break. <laughs> so welcome. Okay. okay, I'm gonna stop sharing now. All right, so it's 4 a.m. my time, Singapore time, and it's 10 a.m. Europe. So I think we can start. Everybody ready? So people are still trickling in. So I think I think we can we can already start. So good afternoon again to all of you. My name is Jenny Lidalmako. I'm one of the regional coordinators of Euraxis in ASEAN. Whether uh, looking for insights into European research policy, uh, funding programs, and, and opportunity travel tips to pursue a scientific career or you want to build tax and meet other researchers, your access world guide is there for you. Uh, I'm actually a part of a two-man team. So there you go, Women Power. I wanted to share to you some slides um, so you can get to know a little bit first time to know to hear about your access. So as you can see here, um, you know, we are an all-in-one networking platform. And an information tool for talented researchers on the move to explore and develop careers uh, in Europe. And um, this is the, the, the two of us, Dr. Susan Retsovasu is based in Singapore. Myself, I'm most of the time in Vietnam. Um, Susan is uh, on medical leave at the moment. That is why I'm, I'm alone uh, today. But uh, next month, of course, she'll be back you know, uh, gearing up for another round of information set sessions uh, in the many programs of the European Union. So don't worry about that. She will be back soon. And uh, in our community, um, we have a lot of activities uh, every time. We have a matchmaking session. Um, so if you are a researcher wanting to have a collaboration with uh, uh, a European institution or, or a specific European researcher, uh, you can showcase your lab through the MyLab. And it's more than just, you know, sharing your research on some sites, but really taking a tour on your laboratory uh, on a virtual plane, of course. So it's much more interesting than these, you know, square faces uh, on on uh, on Zoom. So please um, get in touch with us if you are interested um, to, to have this uh, as part of your uh, project or if you want to introduce this to your institution. We also do info sessions on European funding opportunities such as this one. So, um, so today we are uh, focusing on ASEAN researchers. 13th, if you are from Singapore or if you are from Japan and Korea, please join us for that specific session as well. And we have also info sessions on the Matisse Kodopsa Korea actions. We are very happy to tell you also that um, many of the newest um, addition to the prestigious Nobel Prize winners are were funded at the time by the Marie Curie 
or the ERC. So if you want to join that you know, illustrious luster of, um, cluster of um, researchers doing excellent science while also addressing the sustainable development goals, then please consider the European Research Council grants and the other programs of the European Union. And all we have research career development training from the 11th to, so from this to the 11th, with the EU Research and Innovation in ASEAN. That's a series of panels, uh, also match uh, matchmaking sessions, and also workshops for you. Everything, of course, is of free of charge. And this, this will focus on the twin transition. So many of the programs will be on green and digital. So please watch out for that. Mark your calendars, November 2 to 11, uh, all on a virtual plane. Of course, we have post on writing workshops um, and also alumni and networking events and interregional scientific exchanges. And connecting to why we are gathered here today, we are very happy to report to you that um, there is the newest ERC or European Research Council implementing arrangement from Thailand. So a few uh, weeks ago, we were in Bangkok. Um, he can see uh, David Daly, the European Union ambassador to the Kingdom of Thailand, and the director of the Thai Program Management Unit, PMB uh, of, of NXPO of Thailand, Professor Dr. Sompong Klanong Sroang, signed the new arrangement at a ceremony in Bangkok. So if you look at that, it's really an opportunity, um, but not just for Thailand, but uh, for Southeast Asia. And that's the reason why we're here. So today I am very privileged and I am honored uh, to introduce to you our speakers, our, our experts. I will introduce all of them at one go, so you get to look at them uh, <laughs> and maybe already think about the questions uh, that you want to ask. So please allow me to introduce uh, all of them. First of all, Dr. David Marpao, and I, I really hope I'm doing justice to that. Uh, <laughs> David is a full professor leading the nonlinear Nanotone group at the University of Twente in the Netherlands. So he's joining us all the way from the Netherlands. Thank you so much. He received, received his PhD degree in electrical engineering from the University of Twente. And he was also a doctor researcher in the same university. Um, he joined Kudos University of, or is it CUDOS of Sydney, Australia. And then he was a senior research fellow also uh, in the same university. He was the recipient of actually many, many awards, incredible. Um, the 2015 Discovery Early Career Research Award from the Australian Research Council, 2015 Award, and the 2019 Startup Grant from Netherlands Organization for Scientific Research. In 2022, so very recently, he was awarded the ERC Consolidator Grant on the topic of 3D photonic circuits for brilliant, brilliant um, scattering. I'm sorry, not an expert in this, but sounds very, very interesting. His research interests include integrated photonics, nonlinear optics, and microwave photonics. So welcome, welcome, Dr. David Marpaung. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be at your presentation soon. Our next speaker is um, Dr. Andrea Umek Vellurini. She is current senior advisor at the Science Directorate, Ministry of Education, Science and Sport at the Republic of Slovenia. Since 1999, she is employed at the Ministry responsible for science. Her main responsibility was on cooperation with Slovenia, beautiful country, by the way. I love Slovenia. In the EU research programs, from the stage of their development, on the EU level to the stage of supporting Slovenian research organizations to successfully participate in the EU programs. Both she and I are uh, national contact points, but um, I'm a baby NCP, uh, so I will definitely learn more from her <laughs> when it comes to guiding um, researchers such as you in the European Research Council. She holds a PhD degree in computer and information science from the University of Ljubljana. Oh, I was also studying there for some time. And her first employment was at the Institute Josef Stefan. So I hope that I, I pronounced that right as well. So welcome. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Andrea Venturini. 
And our last, but certainly not the least speaker, uh, very excited to have her because she's a research advisor at one of the universities where many, many students have told me they want to go to, which is the Politecnico di Torino in Italy. She supports the development and submission of research proposals under European funding programs, in particular dedicated to the ERC since 2012. So a wealth of knowledge accumulated over the years. So you can really ask questions to her uh, on how to do the how to do successfully ERC programs. She is project manager for ERC at Polito, an initiative promoted by Politecnico di Torino to support excellent young researchers with the objective of improving their participation. So she's been doing advisory and consult work, making sure that not just do excellent science, but also the ethical requirements, rules, and evaluation, make sure that you are having this holistic research that is also great for the world. So please welcome Dr. Maria Honorato. Thank you so much for joining us. And so with that, I am reminded by the quote, I don't want it good, I want it Tuesday. So it's a very beautiful Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday morning as well for all of you. So I now will give the room to Dr. Dave Marpo for his presentation. Thank you so much. All right, many thanks Jen uh, for the very kind introduction. Uh, I also have to say thank you to Rosario Carbone who, um, uh, yeah, invited me to take part for this uh, event. I'm very excited to take part and share my experience for the RC. Uh, I will try to sh share my screen first. <clears throat> I hope now it's uh, clear that you can see my slides. Yes, you can. Yeah, thank you so much. That's Perfect. Good. Yes. Um, excellent. So, um, um, yeah, hello everyone. My name is uh, David Marpaung mentioned before, I'm fuller at the University of Twente in the Netherlands. And then today we will talk about ERC grants. Uh, I think some of you already have some idea about what uh, ERC grants are, but I think uh, after our one hour session, it will be clear in the end. But then in short, it's a, it's a, it's a really special grant. I think it's different compared to other uh, personal grants uh, nationally available, let's say in Europe. And then there's a few tips and tricks that you can learn to be successful in this application. So a um, bit of my um, background. So I'm originally hailed from Indonesia. So I've looked at the of participants. I've uh, identified a few um, familiar names say, from Indonesia. So um, yeah, hello, apa kabar? Terima kasih sudah uh, berpartisipasi untuk uh, event ini. Um, so um, I studied physics in uh, Indonesia from the Bandung Institute of Technology. And for my, um, um, let's say, master and PhD uh, education, I went here to the Netherlands at the University of Twente. And then uh, for about six years, I've spent at the University of Sydney in Australia as a research fellow and senior research fellow professor at uh, back at the University of Twente. So, um, so this is the timeline that you can see in my uh, uh, in my slides. But then up there, there's also a timeline national grants. And why put there? Because then, um, as I correlate my ERC experience, having previous experience in trying and uh, hopefully being successful in personal grants and so on and so forth, will help. Right. So I came uh, in contact with uh, what a personal grant is when I was in Sydney, and then that was the personal grant from the Australian Research School for Early Researcher, and then. And in 2016, where, while I was in Sydney, I was already giving a try of a ERC start grant. Um, and then uh, it was, it, I'll say, but then um, like uh, what I learned that uh, even doing ERC uh, grant uh, application that is, let's say, failed, you learn so much, right? So uh, I took that experience and then um, I use it for, uh, you know, further ventures into uh, various uh, grants. And then, uh, as Jen mentioned, uh, this year I was awarded the uh, RC Consolidator grant. Actually, let's say 
the third or the fourth largest consolidator grant uh, in the Netherlands. So that was good. Okay, so that's a bit of the uh, of the journey. Let's say so. Let's delve deep into the ERC experience, right? So uh, I start to uh, let's say introduce to ERC when I was a postdoctoral researcher in 2012. So at that time, the University of Twente arranged this kind of introduction. Uh, ERC uh, grants and applications, and then um, people can subscribe, and then they can also get their uh, CV evaluated, and then they can also pitch their idea and so on and so forth, right? So I did that. So I submitted my CV, and then uh, there is this uh, organization that helps the university to introduce the kind of ERC um, uh, grants, applications, and so on and so forth. And then the evaluation result at that time said, yeah, the CV is pretty good, uh, but you need to improve it and then you need to go abroad, right? So this is something that is also very valuable for me at the time is that you need, it, just like in academia, you need various uh, experience, let's say, to be successful in various spaces. So what I did indeed that I, I, I went abroad uh, and then I went to Sydney for a few years as a, as a research fellow. Now, in 2016, um, it came back to me, right, that uh, I really need to have an, uh, have a go, let's say, at an ERC grant. Um, and then at that time, that was my last year available for a starting grant, right? So I thought, okay, Hail Mary, let's, let's just try, right? Um, uh, I was choosing a host in the uh, uh, University of Belgium at that time, and that uh, my experience doing ERC from abroad, it's, um, it's uh, much tougher, let's say, especially if it's your first time. Why? Because then you need a lot of support for ERC grants. Uh, you need a sounding board scientifically. You need people that helps you uh, explain all the little bits of the grant application and so on and so forth. To be able to, to do that from uh, uh, university abroad, um, it's extra tough, let's say. Uh, so then luckily I got um, support from previous grantee let's say, uh, from uh, from my network that helps you uh, land their application and then give feedback and so on and so forth. And then also some support from Lucian. Uh, so I got uh, invited for an interview in Brussels at that time. It was still in person. Uh, but then that was also tough because I didn't know what interview for ERC grant is, right? I've never had the grant interview before. I went there um, with let's say minimum preparation and in the end I did not get the grant. But then um, even do, doing this, uh, this is my advice as well, that uh, just please do it, give it a try because learn so much by doing it, right? So uh, I, I identified, hey, the idea actually, an ERC idea, it was pretty good. So I got a review back from the application. It was 11 reviewers. And they say that uh, the idea is great. But I didn't score the interview because I didn't know how to act on an interview for ERC grant, right? I got nervous and then answering the question was pretty sharp and so on and so forth. But then you learn a lot from that. And then you will know that the NERC, for an ERC application, you have like two stage, right? So you have part B1, which is a shorter bunch year with CV, and B2 that is much longer. And then um, I did a lot of, let's say, copy and paste, let's say, from part B1 to part B2. Part B2 was so, so big, let's say. And that was um, not good. So uh, I will also have a tip later on to say that, okay, make part B1 and B2 equally interesting and, you know, independent from each other. But then uh, what did I get from that? I, uh, I, 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 I get to shape my idea to be a new idea. But then I can you know, reuse it for another personal grant. This is a national fund in the Netherlands and it was granted. So that was good, let's say. So, um, and I moved to the Netherlands and then I a few 
uh, ERC related experience at that time, not applying for a grant, but then helps a lot, right? So from 2016 until now, I regularly review starting grant and uh, creator grant uh, proposals. It helps because then that gives you an idea about what is an ERC uh, idea and what is not, right? What sort of CV that you need to provide. Okay. And then um, I also regularly help uh, colleagues to prepare for their ERC interviews. So that's uh, also helpful, let's say. Um, and then I, I did a few um, you know, funding applications. So you get to practice for grant interviews, which is very important. So, um, and then around 2020, it came back again to me that, oh, I'm expiring for the RC consolidator, so I have to give it a try. So I was planning to do it in 2020, but I did not apply. Why? Because then I that it's not it's not right. So the idea was not solid enough, and then it did, I was not really sure whether I go to each panel and so on and so forth. So what I did is I waited, right? Um, and then until uh, it feels much better to actually do education. I did it in 2021, and finally it was it. So I think one of the learning points is also that it's good to take time and really think about your ERC idea, right? Good preparations help, and then previous, uh, you know, any kind of uh, experience that you can for interviews and so on and so forth also helps. Okay, so what is my ERC project? Project. This is a bit too detailed, let's say, but then uh, as Jen mentioned already that I'm, I have a consolidator grant in the PE7, uh, the panel uh, 7, which is systems and communication engineering. And then uh, the idea of my grant is actually to build a 3D photonic with optical circuit uh, that can be used for uh, promoting light and sound interaction that later on can be used for various application ranging from telecommunication to building uh, quantum computers, right? So um, on the on the right here is just the description of the of the project, and then uh, uh, details of the project as well, the type, and then uh, what level of funding and so on. My project it was granted in uh, marketing, but then I asked them to delay for a bit, six months, so that I can finish my other projects and then. Uh, officially, the ERC project started this week. So very exciting. Um, so I would like now to give a few tips about the proposal writing for ERC itself. I, the biggest barrier for people applying for an ERC is always to start, right? And then to start, you first you need to, let's say, have a certain kind of confidence that, yes, um, I think I'm an ERC researcher, so that, that is also related to the to the CV and so on. And uh, a comment to that is that uh, find new supporters, or people that can, of course, really give an honest uh, assessment and opinion about your, your your CV, but also helps you to get to the point where you can say that yes, I want to make an application. I think the mental barrier is very important to overcome. The second part, of course, is about the idea. Because then for yeah, it's sim simple, it's like good track record and great project, right? And then the rest doesn't really matter. So it doesn't really see race. It doesn't really see where you come from, your nationality, your age, and so on and so forth, right? So uh, it's really about these two things. So about the idea. Uh, what I found really useful is just to pitch it. So make a few slides, a slide deck, and then really try to articulate what is the breakthrough of the project, right? Why is it and high gain? And then finally also a few slides about what you, because then, um, and then the timeliness and then the right profile for you to execute it. <clears throat> about the risk. Some people are really afraid of risk, right? And sometimes they try to hide it. And then this is what is very different from an ERC grant is that you need to uh, identify the risk. It, it's okay to have high risk. I think ERC grants are really accept, accepting that. If I make a contrast with 
different uh, personal grants nationally, let's say, sometimes they are quite risk averse, right? But not, then what you have to do is to really articulate them and then to make a really good plan to tackle this so to achieve all the objectives of, of ERC grants. So that is because then it's high risk, right? So I think that is also very important. As I mentioned before, in terms of the writing, uh, you have to make part D1 and D2 independent, and both of them have, have to be of high quality, right? Um, so, and then to be able to do that, yeah, you, you, you need to have some time uh, so don't rush it, let's say, in terms of writing. And then one advice that is also very, very useful that I found is that be clear of the scope of your ERC project. Sometimes people just write it that I want to do this, 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 this. And at the end of the day, the panel thinks, yeah, this is very ambitious, but it's not realistic, right? So what I found useful is that you really say that this is what I want to do in the ERC grant. The rest might come from the success of the ERC grant. This is of five years. You might have uh, other uh, applications and so on. So sign that the, the key breakthrough is tackled in the ERC grant, but then because you're tackling this very important problem, then you can grow out of that core, right? And then one thing I also found useful is that for your application, really good visuals and knowings. For example, in the cover part of my RC project here or RC proposal, I put the 3D drawing. Um, I actually asked somebody to actually draw it, but then it gives a certain kind of impression from the panel that this is a really good and serious application. Um, also try to do the analysis of the panel. Um, and then uh, later on, we'll have a, a link of, of, of a few resources. That you can have an insight of which panel that is really uh, uh, match your work and what sort of uh, previously granted that panel. And then finally, uh, use support structure, get feedback, colleagues, experts, non-experts. They will have something to say about your proposal and it will be useful for you. Now, uh, one more thing is that, yeah, hopefully, let's say you meant to do your uh, uh, EC grant and then you're invited for interview in the second stage, right? That's a different level of operation as well. You get the notification of your interview much before the actual interview. So you have enough time to prepare and to practice, practice, and practice. This, because um, at the end of the day, what you have to do in various uh, uh, for variation, let's say, is that you need to pitch your project. In my case, in my interview, I it was like five minutes, no slides, right? So it's just me in front of the panel, and um, no, no, and no visual help at all. So you really have to think about your pitch. And then what I found useful is that. If you can articulate and also numerate your breakthrough and innovation, that helps the panel to understand um, your project. For example, that I have three innovations. First innovation, second innovation, third innovation. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to mitigate two risks. The first risk, second risk, and fourth. So really try to make and change them. Um, and then it's roughly, let's say, one year after the submission of the proposal. It's always useful to mention new results and developments. Right? And then you can also study uh, the composition of the panel. You will see it in the, my last slide about the resources. Next one. And then difficulty um, in an ESC is that sometimes you, you actually know what questions will be, right? Some Sometimes it's about your breakthrough, sometimes it's why you, sometimes it's about. Problem is that sometimes because of stress, you know the question, but you don't know the answer. You know the answer, but you cannot articulate it. So my tool that, that I found is that need to get available help for audiovisual IT. 
of uh, nowadays the interviews are uh, online and then for for me uh, I, I use a studio that failed from the from the city and and it's just photo of my interview at that time so get all of that you can okay so uh last slide is the resources that i found very useful so if you want to know anything about what has been funded in your projects all through history you can go to this link and then you can actually uh, uh, you know, select what grant type, which country, which panel, what is the budget, the year, and so on and so forth. The second one is that there's a database for past uh, ERC panel members. So you, if you want to, let's say, predict, if you are invited to an in interview and you want to predict that probably will serve in that particular panel at your year, let's say, you can go to this link and then try to study it, right? So there's also a question about uh, how about successful proposals? Yeah, for me, in the Dutch national contact points, I can actually go there in Amsterdam, make an appointment, and they say you can select three uh, proposal site, right? So that also helps a lot and go to the trainings that's provided by your uh, institutions and then talk to co yeah i think this is my uh, uh, sorry uh presentation and then i wish you good luck for your application if you have any question send me an email thank you thank you so much david uh, for your presentation i mean that's uh what i love about your experience is that you know you had a little setback in the beginning, but it didn't come from from pursuing really this uh, this plan of being an ERC grantee. So I hope that uh, the people inside this room will will learn from that experience, and I'm sure that your your science is a is much better uh, because allowed that uh, setback to happen. So thank you so much for that. And practice makes perfect. So please stay um, for the Q&A. Now I'd like to invite Andrea, Dr. Andrea, to, to join us to give her presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> I hope her slide uh, here is okay. So very warmly welcome from my side. As Slovenia National Contact Point for ERC programs, I will present support measures and support system we have in Slovenia for ERC applicants. First, let me just show you a picture of the Horizon Europe, which is a broad research innovation program at European level, and European Research Council is one part of this, and it's based Let's go on. Uh, the member states or associated countries which are active in Horizon Europe uh, at national network. We are national contact points for different programs with this broad umbrella program of Horizon Europe as I showed you before. And my we as NCs offer free and credential advice with the phone open. We organize or participate in different information events, workshop for applicants, and brokerage events. We also spread the inform relevant information via website or other information channels. But on the other hand, we also receive regular training as NCPs from the European Commission or from the case of uh, ERC from the executive agency of ERC. But as was already said, uh, ERC is really a special program within uh, the family of Holland Europe, and therefore we have a special support measures for the ERC applicants. Uh, in Slovenia, we have three levels of support to our applicants, uh, and they are complementary. We really advise our applicants to use all three levels of support and to combine them. This is not a priority list, and it's not want to start from my point, a national contact point for ERC. I am based with the Ministry of Education, Science and Sport. I represent contact to ERC for our applicants. Uh, and I'm also in a network of with other national contact points for ERC, as was already mentioned by Jen. 
and with others in other countries, we have together a lively and uh, supportive Google group and we exchange best practices and advices how to best support our applicants in our countries. At least once a year, uh, we prepare a national information day on ERC. And during the year, I have a lot of de more dedicated, more focused workshop on specific questions, uh, which I organize together with the interested research organization in Slovenia, and which is really tailored to their needs and the needs of its appli uh, uh, applications. Uh, I also do advice to the institution how to prepare itself to support and to increase the success in ERC and of course to individual researchers who are applicants to ERC. We have two measures which are really well perceived uh, and one is ERC reading as we call it and actually we have a life of success applications uh, in Slovenia, it's the donations of our ERC Grantinia, and we uh, organize these reading days three times a year, and the potential applicants can come to ministry and go through the successful proposals to see how these ERCs have organized their idea, how they have presented the idea, the CV, and all other features which can help to gain you an ERC project. As was already mentioned by, by the ERC grantee, interview evaluation. So those who are uh, achieving the second step of the evaluation and the interview, we organize an interviewer's interview exercise. And we simulate with our panelists, I mean, so-called panelists, we simulate the um, experience for the researcher who is at the second stage of the uh, evaluation process. We also have, of course, an ERC website at the ministry with all the relevant information I leave there for the applicants, but unfortunately it's in Slovene language. Uh, the second level of support or the next level of support is uh, from the point of Slovene Research Agency, which is a funding body for research in Slovenia. Uh, in the past, we have already introduced One is ERC Focus, which is a fellowship for several months to visit an ERC grantee somewhere in Slovenia to gain insight how they have prepared and how they manage ERC project. Uh, the second measure is ERC Perspective, which is actually a complementary research project for those who, as ERC applicants, as today's grantees have told us, it's not the first time, usually it's not the first time you gain your research project. And then uh, from our national funding office, you can receive a research project, a smaller research project, to better refine your hypothesis, your project area, and to be more successful next time at ERC course. We are now... Um, go to introduce in very short uh, in near future we are going to introduce two additional measures for ERC grantees. One is ERC potential which is kind of smaller lump sum budget for startup costs before you start your ERC project because usually you have to adapt a little bit to research environment at the host institution. And uh, the other is going to be introduced very shortly is ERC New Horizons and this is kind of bridge project, a smaller research project. When you finish your ERC project in Slovenia, then you have this bridge project to uh, kind of go forward for the next steps and to be prepared for the next application for ERC for the second one or some other calls to fund, to fund your research group, which was established during the ERC project. This, uh, all those, these measures which are uh, implemented by our Slovenian research agencies uh, agency presented at their website. Here you can have the link. And this is in English language, so it's maybe more convenient. And the third level of support is, of course, host institution with all the trainings, all the support, financial questions, uh, personal questions, uh, and all the other things which are necessary really have a success for the post. And with this, I will close my uh, presentation. This is just 
final <laughs> slide with uh, important links, be it at the ministry or it at the funding and tenders portal of the EU programs. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and I'm open to questions later if you have them for me. A little bit distracting. So then, if you could please stop <laughs> that. Um, so anyway, Ben is here with us. He's our tech, uh, tech expert. So anyway, so what we're trying to do and what what I love there, you know, to and then. All also, for those who are ERC, uh, ERC grantees, you know, there is um, a, a beginning fund just in case, you know, so if you're coming, for example, from Indonesia, uh, EU is quite uh, new and you're starting maybe bringing even your family. The Slovenian um, Research Agency ha is having that kind of support. So that's really excellent. And also after you do your excellent research, you know, while you're finding out what's the next big thing, you're also providing a bridging fund. So that's a like really holistic yes. look at excellent research and making sure that science is sustainable uh, for that experience Thanks. so now we're moving uh please stay with us uh, for the questions we're moving to to the experience of being a host in institution so i'm now i'm uh, inviting uh dr maria honorato uh, to tell us about um, the, about her institution and the support that they provide to potential applicants thank you Jenny, for you introduction and hello hello everyone um i work in the research support department at Politecnico di Torino and i'm going to give you to give an overview of the services and support Politecnico di Torino can provide to interested applicants such as assistance in preparing ERC project proposal conditions for employment and to relocate to, to Europe uh, in this you can see two pictures of our city and uh, one picture of one of the entrance of our university. Um, uh, Torino is uh, in the north of Italy and owes much of the one uh, with, with uh, references uh, to our city and our uh, university. Uh, then uh, uh, there is a, this slide in which I underline why Polito supports DRC. And, and now I was talking about uh, the big changes that we had in our university starting from the 2014 after um, the, the moment in which the university approved the, the ERC at Polito project uh, that include uh, a set of actions to support uh, uh, ERC applicants uh, um, to apply successfully, hopefully successfully to the ERC. Uh, so from the 2014 to date, Polito counts 22 ERC projects, uh, corresponding to a total of 26 million uh, of Euro, uh, EU contribution. Uh, at the following link, uh, you will find uh, the list of ERC projects that we have at Politecnico di Torino, with a short description of the scientific idea, and a short description of uh, uh, also the um, candidate, the principal investigator profile. Um, okay, um, before going in the detail of what, what kind of support is given to candidates, I just want to underline that our ERC applicants to be successful must have an excellent idea of frontier research and demonstrate a competitive curriculum. Uh, so all the uh, activities, supporting activities that has been taught in the project ERC Polito uh, try to address these two um, principal objectives. If you uh, will uh, click, click on this link, uh, you will go in the web page uh, in the Polito website where uh, the ERC and Polito um, project is described. Uh, you will find also information on what is the ERC, what, the, what could be, should be a near ERC applicant profile. And uh, if you click on press your ERC and Polito invitation to external researchers, you will find information on what kind of uh, support action are provided. And you can also express your interest in submitting an ERC project with Politecnico di Torino as host institution and ask for the host institution support. 
uh, in this uh, new slide, uh, I listed the, uh, some of the actions uh, that we provide in the pre-award phase. Uh, uh, as you can see, they are they have been divided in two blocks. Um, one concerning the one-to-one -one support, individual support, and the other one uh, related to classes. Uh, so uh, we help applicants to assess their uh, project idea and uh, see if uh, um, the, require, the ERC requirement are addressed. And similarly, we do the same with the CV. Uh, this is done uh, through specialized personnel uh, or external external counsel, consultants or uh, through internal staff uh, such uh, um, us uh, that we are research manager administrator uh, dedicated to the ERC but also through the, the help of uh, Polito ERC grantees and evaluators. Then we provide a, a toolkit that su support uh, to the writing of the proposal uh, such as ERC annotated templates uh, with the advice and example to structure the proposal. We offer the proposal review at different stages of preparation. We offer uh, the, uh, the training to face the interview in Brussels through uh, internal mock interview, so simulation of what happened in Brussels, uh, or, and or specialized external consultancies, and we give the support in the budget definition. Uh, classes are related on, on uh, the, the ERC info days uh, that we usually do annually, workshop on how to build an ERC idea and CV, workshop on how to write an ERC proposal, and um, occasionally we organize also ERC cafe uh, that are informal events where ERC winners can meet uh, um, interested uh, researchers uh, at Politecnico di Torino and uh, the, he provide uh, um, indication, suggestion and their insight referring to the ERC program. Uh, in this uh, slide, I listed the, the type of support action in the post-award phase. Uh, for, so the first one uh, and most important is the, what I've already cited, uh, the so-called chiamata diretta that uh, allow our university to uh, assign a permanent position to ERC winner as associate professor or full professor. Uh, then we um, ERC winners uh, can negotiate an additional Polito starting grant to recruit personnel or um, purchase equipment not foreseen in the ERC project. Um, then we have, uh, we give support in finalizing the grant agreement between the ERC and the OS institution. We provide support for the project management, uh, for example, uh, for personal recruitment and for the purchase of equipment and consumables. Uh, we provide support for the periodic reporting, support to manage the amendment of the grant agreement, support uh, also uh, in increasing the PI visibility. Um, for example, through the ERC success stories uh, uh, that are available on uh, our institutional website, and also through the support uh, in the participation in public engagement events, uh, such, such as the Polito Biennale, that is our flagship outreach event uh, taking place every two years, or the Researchers' Night, uh, that is an annual science event uh, where researchers all over Europe meet the general public and, this, uh, and explain their research. Uh, and more in general, is given, uh, we give support to ERC winners in communicating their, their research to the general public. Uh, of course, we have also a, a technology transfer division to support researchers uh, on the exploitation of their results research results. Uh, in these slides, uh, conditions for employment, uh, I, you can find the link to the national law the, uh, related to the chiamata diretta. Uh, I did a translation of the text. So uh, as you can see, we, winners of ERC starting grant, ERC consolidator grant, ERC advanced grant as principal investigator may benefit of a direct call as a fixed term research position or position as associate or full professor. At Politecnico di Torino, we, we have given always only the position for associate or full professor. 
Um, in addition to the information provided uh, by the Euraccess network, Polito provides dedicated support for its own staff relocating to our university. Um, the principal help uh, is given through an immigration desk support, which uh, uh, provided the invitation letter, support uh, in the uh, get the resident permit, uh, to getting the BAT number, and here you can find their email address. Uh, then uh, um, Polito uh, support uh, uh, applicants, uh, foreigner applicants, giving an initial, initial short-term housing uh, of the duration of one, two months, uh, and uh, uh, support through welcome services uh, to better understand, to help uh, researchers to better understand uh, the university context uh, and the town context. Uh, um, I wanted to mention also some national benefits uh, that I think are uh, relevant. That is the, related to, to the healthcare. Uh, um, uh, foreigners, foreigner citizens, uh, uh, thanks to uh, a registration to the National Health Service, uh, they may benefit of our uh, complete uh, system and entail equip equal treatment with Italian citizens. And uh, uh, there is also a strong tax advantage for professors and researchers who have carried out their research activities abroad for at least two consecutive years and that decide to move to Italy. They will pay uh, taxes only on uh, the 10% of their income for the following five years. Uh, and under specific condition, this period can be um, extended until 13 years. And then we have also uh, some Polito benefits, benefits given by our university, like the public transport pass, the museum pass, the kindergarten, the counseling service, which provide uh, uh, psychological support. Uh, so uh, I think uh, it's all for me for now. Uh, uh, I thank you for, for your attention. attention. I leave you here my contact uh, so that if you want to have further clarifications, uh, please uh, just write. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Maria, for that uh, excellent presentation as well. I mean, I mean, listening to you talk about Politecnico di uh, Torino, it's, it's, it's great to know the support, the, like from all, all sides, like at all levels. So, you know, for one thing, of course, you're uh, supporting excellent uh, research, but you're also making sure that, you know, this work-life integration is, is, uh, is there. So, you know, the mental health support, I'm sure is very much appreciated. Uh, those who are uh, researchers who have families, you know, the, the support for, for kids. Uh, that's one of the things that we are also, uh, we also think about, especially, you know, for, for women who, who want to go into uh, excellent science. Uh, that's something that, that has to be considered, uh, really. And these post-award actions that you have as well, uh, very much appreciated. So there's a lot of things really that you can take advantage of. It's uh, when you get the ERC grant and a lot of support out there. So you will be given the presentations um, today, those of you who are here. And of course, inside there are live links and we will continue, of course, to, to, uh, to support you in your journey. Um, even um, uh, Dr. David was offering, you know, that if, you, if there is really anyone there, anyone out there very much interested to do this, he is offering to mentor. So thank you so much for that, uh, Dr. David, and I'm sure with Dr. Andrea and Dr. Maria, the same thing as well in the support uh, from their institutions and from their agency. So let's go to the questions. There's a lot of questions here. Don't worry, just in case we can't go through all of the questions, I have promised and I have asked also um, uh, Dr. David and, and uh, uh, Dr. Maria and uh, Dr. Andrea that we will compile them and I will send it all to them and then uh, they can help answer it, you know, uh, even after this program. So please, please don't worry. But let's take some of them as much as we can. So first from Simon. Um, so I know Simon because he is actually uh, an awardee of the Marie School of Security Actions, a very brilliant researcher. So he's now based in Thailand, but he is from Mexico, if I'm not mistaken, originally. 
Uh, so he asked um, for Professor Marpaong, when saying the ERC is hard doing it from abroad, what does that mean? And that is more suitable that once you're in Europe for a non-ERC job, then it's easy to land ERC at the already host institution? Is it about finding the host? And can you tell more about it? Yeah, <laughs> okay. so I think you can hear me well. Yes, yes, we can. Yeah, OK. So Simon, a uh, great question. So I was just merely uh, contrasting my experience uh, between uh, applying from Australia and then applying from Twente here, where it is already my host institution. And then the, 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 the difficulty comes from the fact at that time is that it was my first time doing it from abroad. So the, the breadth of knowledge of ERC grants was not there, let's say, in Sydney. And then I really had to interface with the host institution in Belgium with the time difference and so on and so forth. It was more difficult, let's say. And then in contrast, if you are already at your host, then you have accessible colleagues, you have accessible programs that you can subscribe to. But then that doesn't mean to discourage you to do it from abroad, no. Absolutely not. But then I think nowadays it's already much better that you have the Zoom links and so on and so forth, right? So I think it will be much more doable to do it from abroad right now because then you have access to support. I think very important is to have access to your support structure. All right. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so, Simon, really, um, the floor is yours. <laughs> uh, the world is your oyster. So please uh, do consider applying for the ERC. So next, I'll give this uh, question um, to, to Dr. Andrea and uh, Dr. Maria. There's a question. Hi, I am from Malaysia, uh, working as an academic staff in the National University of Malaysia. It, is it possible for my university to become the host organization for the ERC grant? Would you like to take this on, Dr. Andrea first, and then Dr. Maria next? Yes, my pleasure. Uh, this is only possible for Malaysian institution, research institution. It's only possible in the case of ERC synergy grants. ERC has three research calls, so to say. Three are individual, like starting grant consolidator, as was presented by David, and advanced grant. It depends on the level of your careers, which is suitable for you. And then there is ERC synergy grant, which is meant for a two, three, or four principal investigators to work together, and one of them in the group can be from outside of Europe. Thank and you it so could be, of course, that. Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, this, to... this is the answer. <laughs> it's correct. Maria, would you like to join? No, it's, this is the answer. I, I just, I just confirm what she said. Okay, thank you. Um, can I ask you another uh, another question then? Um, is there any tool that this is this question is there um, addressed to you directly by Sarah Okana? Is there any tool that we could use to assess our CV to see how far we are in terms of the position to apply for the ERC grant? Uh, let's say uh, we usually assess uh, uh, through a list of. Uh, uh, also a question, but uh, uh, a self-assessment uh, can be done, for example, um, going in the uh, official ERC website, selecting, uh, for example, if you are starting grant or consolidated grant, I, I've not, I don't know, but if you are, let's say, starting grant, you select um, the last quarter winners uh, um, and pro possibly choosing because you can select also the panel uh, to which they belong. And uh, um, then um, you can compare your CV with the CV of these uh, uh, last winners. So you can have a look on uh, their international uh, uh, CV and experience, uh, perhaps your H index, uh, your publication, uh, uh, the impact of the, the, the publication. So these are more or less uh, uh, some of the characteristics. I would say the first assessment is having comparing with the last winners, your CV with the last winners. Yeah, that's a very good base. So you try to juxtapose your CV with those who won the ERC grant. I think that's a... Yes, you don't have to go back, back too much um, uh, back yeah. in the years because otherwise you will see that uh, indicators uh, 
uh, are already very high thanks to the, uh, the year C. So you, you have to keep the, the last winners. All right, thank you so much for that. There's a specific question for uh, Professor David. Hello, could you please elaborate on panel analysis? Yes, so maybe that was not super clear. So um, the panel itself uh, uh, consists of topics that would, uh, let's say, fit your proposal, right? So in your submission, you submit to a single panel or maybe multiple if you have multidisciplinary work, right? And then uh, later on, uh, the, the, the panel itself consists, this is a committee consists of panel members that will make the decision whether you will get the ERC grant or not. Sometimes people think that it's the reviewer that makes the decision, it's not, right? So the one that you really have to convince is the panel and the panel is finite, maybe 15 people and then they they take turn, let's say, for odd years and even years they serve, and then usually they serve for five, six times. So you can actually make a good prediction, let's say, if you're submitting for this year, uh, odd years or uh, even year, and then you can actually see, oh, yes, probably you will have professor this, professor that, and so on and so forth, serving in the panel, right? Then you already know your audience, actually. So the reviewers will review and then give uh, uh, input to the panel, but then the panel will make the decision and then will will be the ones that you face during the interview. So this analysis actually, it's really, really important, I think. Thank you, Professor David. So we have uh, a two-part question from Professor Mehta, and perhaps the first part you can uh, answer uh, Dr. Andrea and the second part for Dr. Maria. ERC has already announced the research themes for application yet? I think this is a question. If so, please kindly give examples. And the next part of the question, what are the requirements in terms of institutes from both sides? Uh, if, I, if I've got it correctly, it's about the topics, which are the topics of the ERC calls. Oh, well, well, ERC calls are uh, open to every scientific domain, every scientific uh, topic is uh, welcome at the ERC call. It depends if you are on which level of career are you. If you are after, I mean, in the first years after the PhD, then you are for the starting grant call, later for the consolidator grant call. And I mean, if you have already so, developed research so. career, then you are in advanced call. But every call is, uh, is open to every scientific question. It doesn't matter from mathematics to history and anthropology, whatever. But you have in your application, you have to choose one of the 27 panels. They have divided, so to say, the whole science into 27 panels. And as we have seen by Dr. David, he chooses P, uh, PE7 domain, which is uh, for uh, I think for systems and engineering, but I mean, you have these 27 panels, as I said, from mathematics to history, and you choose which panel should read your proposal and evaluate your proposal. And there are also keywords for each panel, which helps you selecting the right panel for you. But it's up to you to send your proposal to which panel you want, but every topic is welcome. There are no priorities. And even I have to say that uh, budget wise, they divide the budget of the call, they divide by panels, by topics, if I can say so, they divide it according to the number of applications received by certain panels. So the money is following the number of applications, no priorities here. I hope this clarifies the question. That's a very good point. Yes, uh, thank you for that. Dr. Maria? On the yeah, Jenny, can you, can you uh, repeat the question? The question was on the requirements for the institutions. I think this was a uh, requirement the from the institution to, let's say like, a, what do you mean an internal, uh, what are the, um, the criteria? Uh, yes, yes. To, to yes. We, that we apply to select uh, external uh, researchers. Yeah. Yeah, or maybe like what are you looking for for politic polytechnical? Um, if you are looking for a potential, you know, ERC applicant, 
how would this person look like? I think that would be um, a safe way to, to, to answer and also maybe answers the other questions as well. Yes. Um, let's say that um, request that comes from external researchers um, go through an uh, internal assessment uh, of the rector and the vice rector of research and also of the director uh, to which uh, his uh, type of research uh, will, uh, will fit. And um, they mainly, um, they usually appreciate very much, as I told you before, um, and are really happy uh, to receive uh, requ requests of participation uh, with the Polytechnic of Torino. Probably the only uh, selection uh, is based on uh, um, if uh, um, topics are really far from what we, um, what the Politecnico Torino has defined uh, as uh, their major objective in research. Uh, so we, we are focused on engineering and uh, architecture. Uh, so uh, if it if comes uh, arrive at requests very far, far from our fields, uh, probably uh, these requests can be disregarded. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Maria. And if I may add to that, if you're looking for a host institution, uh, you can also go to the Your Access website that you can click on host uh, institution and then you can uh, try to see you know, your, your perfect match uh, depending on the kind of uh, science that you want to do. So unfortunately, um, we are running out of time. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Professor David Marpaong, uh, Dr. Andrea Venturini, Dr. Maria Honorato, also our um, colleagues from the European Research Council, especially to Rosaria Carbone and, and Sam Christie. And um, with that, I would like to assure those who are attending now, and even those who were not able to attend us, we had like over 600 registrations. So a lot of interest for ERC. We will be sending a, the presentations with the permission of, of our speakers. At the same time, we would like to inform you that there are um, practical videos that you can watch at the ERC channel, the European Research Council channel, so, so, so you know how to all of these intro uh, questions that you have on how to apply for the grant, uh, it's all there. So uh, please please uh, also visit that. And I will end with a quote by the president of the ERC, Maria Lepton. Excellent science is intrinsically international. So encouraging scientific exchange across continents can only benefit us all. So with that, a very good morning to our speakers from Europe. Good afternoon to every one of you in Southeast Asia. This has been Jen. Thank you so much for joining us and have a good day. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much.